Hey everyone, it's Tasia. Welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. My N is upside down. I know, I didn't realize until the glue had dried. So we're gonna just pretend like maybe that's not there and we won't even know. So anyways, today's video is showing you how I made this menu board. Uh, basically, Zach and I use this menu board uh, to kind of plan our menu planning as well as our shopping. Um, so we store all our recipes up in that tin up there, don't mind my dirty window, uh, but we store all the recipes up there and then we just clip them on to this board here um, and we're able to make a pretty accurate shopping list of what we need for that week, which really helps us with our budget. We're able to not overspend and not buy things that we don't need or that are going to spoil before we can even get to them. We are so bad at buying too much produce. I think that's where we waste most of our money is on vegetables and fruit that we don't get to in time. So this is going to help us kind of stay in line. Um, but it's not in any particular order. It's not like we eat it uh, Monday through, you know, Sunday. Uh, we just, whatever we feel like having that day, like say we're going to have the baked ravioli, we just go ahead and pluck that off, use the recipe card in the kitchen, put it back in the tin when we're done, and that's that. So if this is something you'd be interested in making, stay tuned. I got all of the little parts and everything from our local craft store called Craft Warehouse, which honestly is a pretty expensive craft store because they don't do coupons like Michael's or Joann's. So if you can go kind of bargain hunting, you can definitely find these pieces elsewhere and you can kind of modify this. You wouldn't need to use those little wooden letters. You could hand paint something or if you wanted to do it magnetized or something like that. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So for the base of the menu board, I'm going to be using this pre-painted piece of wood that I got from Craft Warehouse. That was one of the benefits of shopping there is they do have a nice wood selection. I was able to get the wooden letters as well as the backboard. But again, they are a little more expensive. So if you're able to shop around, that's awesome. Um, other pieces that I'm going to be using are some super glue, some twine, and some clothespins. Uh, so we're going to get started with painting the letters. I'm just using some trash mail um, <laughs> to paint on because I didn't have newspaper. Uh, and with the whole election coming up, there's a whole bunch of garbage coming through the mail that we just toss out into the recycling. So I just dug through that. and Yeah, so anyways, I'm going to be using the chalk paint. I chose to use chalk paint because I like the finish that it gives and I feel like it's really forgiving because I am not the best painter. So chalk paint is just really easy to work with. I just did one layer and it dried super quick. Another option you could do would be just any type of acrylic paint or any paint really that works well for on wood. When it comes to the paintbrush, I honestly have no idea what kind of paintbrush that is. I looked for something that was rather big and rather flat so I could just paint as much surface area as I could uh, so I just got the cheapest brush really so I think anything would work I'm really not picky when it comes to this type of stuff because you're just it's one solid coat of paint um, but if you are going to say paint directly onto the back of the board that's when you would want to get a little picky with your brushes and I'm sure if you're good enough to do that you would know what kind of brush that you'd want to use but I think that would look really nice if you were able to kind of just hand paint on the word menu or what's for dinner or something catchy it would look really cute but anyways I'm just going to go ahead and finish painting the rest of the letters I'm just putting one paint of, or one layer of paint and it dries really quick I even brought out my hair dryer because I was really impatient I think I did this whole project in less than an hour I just uh, kind of blow dried the paint and then for the glue it dried really fast as well so you'd be pretty surprised at how quickly you can get something like this done and there are so many different variations that you could do on this project. If you had, say, a magnetic board, you could do magnets on the back of the clothespins instead of the twine. Or um, say you wanted to do like a chalkboard version and kind of glue them on. There's so many fun things that you could do with this. If you guys end up making this project and you do different variations or different colors or anything I would love to see it so if you post it on Instagram or anything like that definitely tag me I would love to see what you guys come up with so I'm just wrapping up with the painting of the letters I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry these really quick off camera and then we're going to move on to gluing them down onto the board um, so I'm gonna 
I kind of wing things. I'm really bad at reading directions or just doing anything like that. So I'm using my ruler that I got from TJ Maxx. I keep it in my purse at all times, and it came in really handy because I have no idea where my regular ruler is. Um, so I'm just making sure that it's relatively centered, and then I'm going to use a little pencil and kind of mark where the bottom of the letters hit. And this is where I wish I would have caught that that darn N is upside down. It's going to haunt me forever. <laughs> but anyways, I'm using the E6000. This stuff works really well. And it's kind of stinky. Another thing, or one thing that I don't like about it is the tube. You lightly squeeze it, and then you're, you're done with the glue, and it just keeps oozing out like a volcano. So be really careful when you put the glue off to the side. Um, I put it down onto a piece of paper, so when it keeps bubbling out glue, it can just bubble it out onto the paper, and I can just go ahead and throw it away. Um, so I'm just going to glue down each letter and then to make sure that it's lined up straight I'm gonna use a chopstick and kind of just pretend like it's a level like I said you guys I like to wing things if it takes too long I I'm just so impatient I just want to I just want to get my project done so I'm just gonna use it like that and I think it worked out pretty well uh, again when it comes to putting the glue on another little tip is I'm putting a really thin layer if you do put on a thicker layer keep the thickness towards the center of the letters so that way when you push it down hard a whole bunch of glue doesn't come oozing out the edges but if you keep the nozzle on the wood and you kind of pretend like you're drawing like a marker it puts a pretty good um, thickness of glue on the letter for you and then once I get that last letter down, I'm going to go ahead and scour my kitchen for any heavy object that I can find that I can place on the letter to ensure that it sticks on there really well. So I think I got like a bottle of cleansing spray, some cups, a bottle of wine, like all kinds of odds and ends to put on there, but they did the job. I let the heavy objects hang out on there for about 30 minutes and the glue... Uh, everything was kind of set so I went ahead and moved on being the impatient crafter that I am to uh, go ahead and attach the twine I used little eye hooks that I got from Ikea you could use the little eye hooks if you have them on hand or say a staple gun or maybe just some nails or some thumbtacks whatever works to get the twine to stay I did not cut the twine until I was completely satisfied with how it was hanging on the board because at first I had a little bit too much slack and then I made it a little bit too tight so thankfully I didn't trim the edge down and I was able to adjust it. Wait until you put the paper clips on the string or the twine that you're using to make sure that it's what you want because it may look good but then when you put it on there it's kind of huh. So once I get that all straight away, um, I go ahead and put on the paper clips and then I hang the recipe cards. The recipe cards are just a collection that we've made over time. Any recipe that we like, even if it's not the actual recipe but just an idea, we put it on the card and then that way you can hang the idea from your menu. Oftentimes I go through spurts where I'll be making a recipe and then I'll just completely forget about it. So this way you just have a like a working collection. It's always growing. And then if I have recipes in recipe books, I just transfer them onto the index card. I used my little typewriter to type them up, but you could just handwrite them or, you know, whatever is easier. But I really liked the look of the typed out cards. But here is the final product. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe learned some new tricks or tips or ideas. If you do happen to make something like this and you post it online, again, be sure to tag me at Sweet Kawaii Design. I would love to see what you come up with. Um, and if you like this type of video, definitely give it a thumbs up and I will try to make more videos of the little crafts that I do around the house. Until next time, I'll talk to you later. Thanks again.